The movie starts at a classroom where Kate, who loves children, is teaching them in a rather unconventional way. She starts her lecture with literature, but ends it with reading a comic book to the whole class. The principal, who is standing by the gate, does not like her ways. He asks her to meet him in his office. He suggests Kate to quit her job and become a barber just because she has beautiful hair. Then we see another girl named Meg, who is trying to sell her product to a big cosmetic firm. They found out that the product she is trying to sell is made in North Korea and refused to deal with her. Later, after the meeting, when she is headed to her home, it turns out that her car gets towed and she starts cursing in the middle of the street. Kate and Meg live together and are childhood friends since fifth grade. Meg tells Kate about all the unfortunate things that happened to her all day, and then a guy walks in naked. He is an Uber driver who drove Meg to home, and Meg f at him because he is hot. Later at night, Kate went to sleep early, and Meg came up with a plan to go for a vacation to have some fun. She wakes up Kate at 4 in the morning to tell her that their flight leaves in 3 hours. They make it to the airport and are about to miss the flight due to a long queue. Meg came up with a plan to flirt with one of the airport staff who is managing the first class passenger's queue. She starts taking her undergarments out in front of the guy while faking to find her elite members pass. The guy ended up helping both of them while Kate finds it degrading. During security check, Meg is asked to throw the liquids, but she started drinking the soda and finished it while other people gave her a look with their judgy eyes. In the airplane, Kate is scared of heights and wants to switch her seats with Meg, but she tells her that she needs extra leg space and gave her the anti-anxiety pills. She started burping and it smells bad. A tall blonde dreamboat came and tells Meg that he is seated in the middle. Both Meg and Kate are attracted to the guy. The guy introduces himself as Ryan. Meg asks his reason for travel and he informs her that he's going for a wedding. Kate jumps in the conversation and introduces herself. Meg starts moaning loudly while imitating a scene from a show. Kate tries to correct her, but her tongue starts slipping as her medication kicks in and she fell asleep. They were headed for Carolina, but because of a hurricane, the captain announces that they have redirected towards St. Louis. They made it to the hotel, where Anuj the receptionist provided them with a junior suite. Kate is still intoxicated with her medications. The lift door opens, and they find that Ryan is also staying in the same hotel. Ryan asks them out for a drink in the evening, and Kate says that she loves drinking. They made a plan to meet at 8. Kate is taking her dress out for the evening, but since airlines lost Meg's luggage, she asked Kate to borrow hers, but she refuses. She went to the receptionist asking for a mall nearby, but it was too far. She threatened to leave a bad review at Yelp and Anuj planned for her. In the evening, Kate meets Ryan, and when he asks about Meg, she says that Meg might not come. Ryan looks behind her and gets stunned to see Meg in a beautiful Indian sari. She tells them that Anuj's mother lends it to her. They go to a booth where the news announces that the hurricane will last longer. And due to the same reason, all flights to Florida have been shut. Ryan asks the girls, what do they do for the living? Meg lies about being a CEO of a company that makes skincare products. Kate lies about being a teacher to special need kids. She says that the kids teach her more than she teaches them. The mute kid teaches her not to talk so much, so she is going to shut up now. Ryan says he is nothing in comparison to them. He is just a firefighter, ironically creating more fire between the girls than extinguishing. The DJ hits the music and they started dancing with Ryan, taking turns. Kate hits the floor solo and shows her move, but when Meg did the same, her boob came out hanging from the sari. They are in the lift, and as the girls leave Ryan, he invites them to a city tour next day. The girls agreed. In the lobby, Kate claims that Meg pulled the boob out intentionally because she has great boobs. Meg disagrees. Kate says that she likes Ryan. Meg replies that she loves him. Kate remarks that she does not even remember his last name. Next day, they ask Ryan to choose one of the two places to visit in the city. Meg then gave him the idea to go on a hot air balloon ride and they could get a great view of the city. Kate is afraid of heights. Meg tells her to meet later in the evening, but she insists on going as well. The balloon operator has only one good eye and Kate is panicking. The balloon has not even elevated yet. As it goes higher, Kate is getting scared and starts to panic. Ryan tries to calm her, but she keeps on insisting to going back and starts crying. Meg knew this was going to happen. She can't take all the screaming and moping. She bought a champagne from the operator. As she removes the cork from the bottle, it hits the only good eye of the balloon operator, and he starts crying blood. Kate panics even more, and the whole situation becomes stingy. They somehow made it to the ground and landed on a kid's birthday cake. They went back to the hotel all tired. 
Meg tells Ryan that they should celebrate for staying alive. Ryan rejects the offer saying he is going to relax by the pool. The girls get excited. Kate is almost ready in her baby type swimsuit when Meg shows up and calls her cute while showing off her ass crack like cleavage. Kate gets anxious and starts making some adjustments on her suit with a scissor. Meg reaches to the poolside. She is in the jacuzzi when she invites Ryan over. Unfortunately, some other peeps misunderstood her and joins her in the pool. Ultimately, there was no space left for Ryan and he decides to pass. Kate came after making a bikini out of her swimsuit and invites Ryan to sit on the chair by the pool. Ryan went to her and complimented her outfit. Later, Meg challenges Kate with their diving skills with Ryan as unbiased judge. Kate accepts. They both do a jackknife dive and Ryan gave both of them a five. Then they do a backflip and Ryan is impressed at this point. Meg decides to take it up a notch by doing a forward one and a half tuck. Kate tries to stop her because it could be dangerous, but Meg calls her chicken. She continues to do it and hit the water with full front. Everybody knows that it must have hurt bad. She screams in pain and sits in the pool out of embarrassment while Kate asks her if she is still alive. Later, Kate is drinking at the bar and Meg arrives there. Kate makes an order for Meg and asks her if she is okay. Meg says she turned her eyelid inside out. They get the news that the hurricane is gone. Then they see Ryan leaving and they both chase after him. Ryan decides to leave for the wedding by car. Meg says that why is he going with a complete stranger and that he could be a serial killer. Ryan hugs them both goodbye. Meg tells them to make space for her. She'll be back with her luggage. Kate says the same. Now four of them are on a 17 hour trip to Fort Lauderdale. During the trip, they play games, dance to music, have some food and play cards. Meg starts applying moisturizer on Ryan's hand. Kate can see them from the front seat and feels jealous. She shows a picture of Meg from prom where she is wearing a protective helmet. Ryan laughs, looking at the picture. Kate tells them that it was to protect her weak skull and reshape her head. Meg is embarrassed and glares at Kate with hatred as she tells them that other students called her names. Kate starts calling out the names as Ryan and Craig laughs. Scrotum head, reservoir tip, Captain Retard, soft skull smurf. Kate tells them that Meg's malformation motivated her to become a teacher to special needs kids. They reach to a gas station where Kate ran for toilet. The toilet is all filthy and she somehow manages to let loose on the tank. She heard a tap on the door and shouts that it's occupied. Turns out Meg has blocked the washroom door and locked Kate inside the washroom. She screams for help, but no one can hear her. She starts to roll herself in the toilet paper. As she tries to climb up on the window, she fell and one of her leg gets dunked in the toilet seat. She slips and falls on the floor covered with poop. Meanwhile, Meg tells Ryan that Kate might take some time because of her diarrhea. She asks him out for hookup once he is done with the wedding. Ryan receives a call and went away to answer it. As she is talking with Ryan, Kate climbs out from the washroom window and fell on the garbage underneath. Ryan rushes to help her and Meg asks, what happened? Kate is furious and screams that someone locked her in the washroom. Craig comes to check on Kate and got his hands on shit, quite literally. Kate screams in anger and goes away to take a bath with a pipe water. They are back on their way and Kate acts and says that her neck got tweaked when she fell. Ryan offers to help her and she starts moaning loudly in the car. Meg is agitated with this and spikes the champagne and offers it to Kate to help her loosen up. She declines the offer, but Craig took the bottle from her and started chugging. She tries to stop him, but he says that she does not know him. She asks Craig to switch with him, but he says that he is used to long driving halls and this is nothing. It's nighttime now and everybody should go to sleep. Yes, everybody. The car hits a sign and the headlights are broken, so they have to take a halt. As they are getting out of the car, Kate sees that Meg spiked the champagne and asks her if she is insane. Craig is out of his senses and is continuously talking to himself. Ryan asks the receptionist if they can get a rental or a cab urgently, but unfortunately there is none available. They decided to stay at the hotel for the night. Kate asks for a separate room because of obvious trust issues. As they are getting in their rooms, Meg steps back and tells Kate that she gives up and Kate can have him. She refused to her generosity. Later, Meg is drinking at the bar and Craig joins her. Craig is a jewelry store owner. He tells Meg that whenever a girl comes to his store, they always look for diamond, yet there are so many other great stones out there. Meg understood where he is pointing at. Meanwhile, Kate was headed to her room and Ryan approached her and grabbed her boob. He kissed her and took her to his room. Kate finds out that Ryan has a crooked PP. They make love in all sorts of ways and Kate finally celebrates her win. The next day, Kate is having her breakfast when Meg joins her. 
Meg tells Kate that she is sorry and that Ryan has nothing more than abs and bent PP. Kate realizes that Meg also slept with him. An argument ensues between them. Kate pushes Meg and she did a kill shot on Kate in return. They started throwing food at one another and were handcuffed by the police in the end. Craig informs the girls that Ryan took his car and left a note. He checks Ryan's Google Plus account and tells the girl that it's his wedding today. The girls promise to pay the bills of the damage they have done, and the police let the girls go. They made it to the wedding venue, but it was already over. Ryan saw the girls and rushed towards them. The girls threaten him and that they are going to tell his wife about what he did. Ryan says that both of them have been throwing themselves on him ever since they met him on the flight. Kate says that he slept with two different girls a day before his wedding. In what world is that justified? Ryan says that he has been in a relationship with his wife since freshman and will happily spend the rest of his life with her. But girls like Kate and Meg are every guy's dream. He requests the girls not to mess up his wedding. At that moment, Ryan's wife came and tells him that they had a photo shoot session at Six Sharp. She is Asian and very controlling, nothing unusual. Ryan introduces Kate and Meg and they tell his wife that she looks beautiful. Once they left, Kate and Meg laughs at Ryan and think that his wife is going to take good care of him. They have four hours before their flight to home. Meg decides to meet Craig and apologize for how she behaved with him. She kisses him and hopes that it will make up for her mistakes. Back at home, Meg decided to take on her responsibility instead of relying on Kate all the time. She is studying and is now in relationship with Craig. Later, she went to Kate's apartment and they both watched TV together. The end. Get me down right now! Oh my god, we're gonna die! Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.